Hey guys, I'm Lee Taylor, that's the 2021 Volkswagen Tiguan, and this is a right lane review. The People's Car brand has a sleigh of great modern offerings, and some of its best are their SUVs. With the SUV market being incredibly competitive, Volkswagen aims to stay calm, cool, and collected. So the redesigned Tiguan is just an update to the already existing Tiguan platform, offering improvements on tech, dynamics, and looks, and the Tiguan has been a favorite in the midsize class for some time, often outperforming cars from Toyota, Ford, and Mazda. So can Volkswagen keep up the lead? So how is the Tiguan when you get it out on the road? Well, overall, it's a pretty well-rounded car. It's a Volkswagen, so you expect it to be nice and practical, and they think of all the details. And the Tiguan has been a popular car in the segment for a reason. It's easy to see out of, it's easy to use, it's, it's driver-friendly, it's passenger-friendly, it's incredibly safe, and the dynamically, it's, it's a good place to be as well. Features-wise, the car is packed full of really good tech. You have all the new haptic controls, like the ones here on the steering wheel and the ones for the aircon unit, Discovery Pro, Wood Wireless, Android Auto, and Apple CarPlay. Nice big digital driver's display. And you also have all the great park tech, so park assist, as well as a rear camera that shows you lines of change. You can get a 360 camera um, in the sound and vision pack, which also includes a heads-up display and home car and stereo. And you also have an option for a sunroof, which you don't have in this car, and that's probably the one option that I really, I, I really miss in this particular presser. Um, from safety tech, you have depth cruise control, forward collision warning, blind spot assist, blind spot monitors, um, rear traffic, rear cross traffic alert, all the things you expect in a family SUV. And overall, this is a fantastic machine. It's comfortable, thanks to the dynamic chassis control. It's got several different modes, including a snow and an off-road mode. Uh, it's got a sport mode. So pretty much any scenario, any clip of acceleration, this thing is happy. And that's a typical Volkswagen, and there's a reason why there's a bit of premium. And yeah, it's more expensive than, say, the RAV or the Escape, and definitely more expensive than the Mazda, but uh, it gives you a couple of extra frills and details that you wouldn't get otherwise. For example, heated steering wheel. Generally not a fan, because it's either burn your fingertips off or nothing. But this car's got three different modes. It has a you know, warm your hands up through some really thick gloves mode, a normal mode for a cold day, and a light warmth on the steering wheel mode, which is what I have set at the moment. And that is probably one of my favorite features, actually. And it's a small detail that you wouldn't get in something like a Ford or a RAV, or a Toyota RAV. Now, dynamically, this car really shines. So I said that the Ford Escape I thought was a sports car in the segment, and I was curious to see what the new Tiguan was like. And the new Tiguan has proved that it's one up to the Ford. The Ford needed all-wheel drive to be better, and this particular presser that we have in the Tiguan has all-wheel drive. So we're driving in the uh, 162 TSI R-Line, and that means this is the 2-liter turbocharged four-cylinder with 162 kilowatts and 350 newton meters of torque through a 7-speed dual-clutch gearbox, or DSG, and all-wheel drive. And that is um, pretty much the best pairing in this chassis, full stop. Plenty of response from the dual clutch gearbox, a punchy two liter engine, decent fuel economy as long as you keep your foot off of it, but the drive modes kind of help with that. Now there are some niggles in the dual clutch, for example, when you're around town, going around a roundabout or low speed changes in, in speed, it, it can hiccup on occasion. It'll roll backwards when you're changing from drive to reverse, for example. It's small, but nothing major. But it's just things you have to get used to when you have a dual clutch. Those things that unnerve you and maybe shy away from a dual clutch in general. But what the trade-off there is, is a super responsive transmission. That as soon as you put your foot down, knows exactly what gear it's supposed to be in and uh, takes it, the wrath of the two liter out on it. And it's a fantastic pairing. You have some paddle shifters on the back here you can play with and they're really responsive. You don't get that in a lot of the normal uh, automatics and you definitely don't get it in a CVT. So if you're after an SUV that's got this sort of premium feel, but also is giving you that German athleticism that Volkswagen's known for, it's hard to really give you any recommendation other than a Tiguan because it's, it's a fabulous package. Well-rounded, fun to drive, and um, my personal favorite in the group. But, you know, go have a run in one. Let me know what you think. So 
has the cockpit on the inside of the Tiguan. Well, to start with, it is a typical Volkswagen, so it's absolutely beautiful in here, and it's very high quality for a mainstream brand. You sit in these R-Line seats, which are, will be a bit stiff for some, but I don't mind them personally, and you're behind this nice R-Line wheel. Now, it does have um, a new shape. It has little protrusions on the side, so it's a bit odd to hold sometimes, and it has these two haptic pieces on either side for controls, like uh, the automatic cruise control, the beautiful digital driver's display, the heated wheel and infotainment controls are all here. And being haptic, they're a bit odd. So there's no actual physical button. It's all vibration and touch. So it takes a little bit getting used to, but it works okay. You also have that beautiful digital driver's display, like I mentioned, which is stunning and one of the best in the business. You can also get this car with a sound and vision pack, which includes a Harman Kardon stereo and a full heads up display, which I've seen and is also beautiful. You have Discovery Pro system here, which is Volkswagen's infotainment system, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which are wireless on this car, as well as gesture controls and some haptic touches down here for the aircon. Now the haptic touch again is something you have to get used to, but if you can get past its weird kind of touchy feely moment, it works all right. Other than that, there's plenty of cubbies throughout the cabin, plenty of spaces to put things, some nifty cup holders in the middle. Um, all your driver controls are down low, uh, big cubbies up top for glasses or whatever else you can think about. It's a really beautiful place to be, felt lined door bins, but out of all of this, and with this wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, I just don't have wireless charging. So that's a bit odd. <laughs> So how's the back seat in the Tiguan? Well, it is a class favorite for a reason. There's plenty of space back here and it's very comfortable with these seats, which also adjust forward and aft if you need to. Plus there's plenty of cubby space. So just like the front, the door bins are lined with felt so nothing rattles around. A nice big pocket as well as two smaller pockets for phones or gadgets or whatever you can think of. An overhead bin for more things. You also have your own zone of climate, a USB-C point, a 12 volt socket, cup holders and unrest in the middle as usual, and it's just a lovely place to be. So how's the boot in the back of the Tiguan? Well, to start with, you have quite a quick opening gate, which is nice and big. And once you're on the inside, there's plenty of room for a couple of bags, uh, maybe a couple of trips to Bunnings or Ikea, and the seats fold down flat thanks to some tabs on either side. Plus there's plenty of space for bits and bobs and hooks for bags and that sort of thing. You also have Volkswagen signature load floor, so a higher normal setting and a lower setting for taller items. And underneath the load floor is a full size spare. So overall, pretty practical. So what's the top bottoms and final verdict for the 2021 Volkswagen Tiguan? Well, on the bottom are a few things to keep in mind, particularly in this highly competitive SUV segment. One's the fact that this car is fitted with a dual clutch and it's fantastic on the open roads and in sport mode, but around town can be a little bit clunky and have the typical dual clutch oddities. The tech is beautiful and well designed, but it can also be a bit touchy. The haptic systems are something you just have to kind of get used to and the gesture controls are a bit glitchy. And overall, beautiful car, but it is a bit pricier than everything else. So what's on top for the Tiguan? Well, to start with, it's a fantastic looking machine. This midlife update has really made the Tiguan stand out amongst the other cars. And I really like this nightshade color as well. It's packed full of really good tech, great updated part tech, and overall just a great place to be and feels very modern. And it's very much modern Volkswagen athleticism. So it's comfortable at every speed. And this is definitely the sports car in the segment. So that's my final verdict on the 2021 Volkswagen Tiguan. Well, to start with, it's more athletic than the RAV4. It's more comfortable than an Escape but it does hold a premium over every other mid SUV in the class, but for good reason. So if you want the German presence in the mainstream package, definitely check out the Tig One. She's wearing two shoes. She's wearing shoes and then she's got her shoes in shoes. Do you see this? Okay, anyway.